Okay, so I've pre-made my card bases. Ignore the colour on my fingers. You'll see where that came from in a little while, trust me. Um, so I've made six um, A6 sized card blanks, just in white cardstock, just usual cardstock kind of weight. Um, and they're all going to be side openings rather than top openings, which I normally do. So I've already got those already cut. So of course, if you're in the States, um, the nearest equivalent to this is going to be A2, which is going to be just almost the same, but not quite the same. So four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches would be your A2 size, um, based on your eight and a half by 11 paper. Everybody else who uses ISO standard sizes, A6, which is 105 by 14, he says, can't remember. About 148 and a half, so 148 and a half millimeters. So 105 millimeters by 148 and a half millimeters. In Imperial, that's four and one eighths and five and seven eighths. Yeah, let's stick to millimeters. Okay, the other thing that I've done, so I've got six of those, is I've already cut out six pieces of black cardstock. Now, this is a textured cardstock from, I think it's Paper Mania. Yes, Paper Mania. So this is from their capsule or the black capsule. And as you can see, weight 216 GSM. So it's not thick cardstock. Um, about 120 pound, I think, maybe, I don't know. Um, I did have a, an equivalency kind of um, chart and I can't remember what I did with it. But anyway, that's what this is cut from. So that's that one. So I've got six of those. I'm not too bothered about the raggy edges, but what I want to do first of all, is, is to create some, well, a little bit of a background. So this is also cut just slightly smaller than the front of my card base. So there is gonna be a little bit of a white border all the way around. Like I said, don't worry about those little raggy edges. I have got a little emery board that I'm just going to whip around just to remove those. My blade's not the sharpest blade at the moment um, on my paper trimmer, which is why I'm getting some fuzz. It's a stamping up paper trimmer, um, which means I have to order my blades from stamping up, um, but I can't get hold of my nearest stamping up demonstrator. I think she's retired, so I will have to see if I can get some from somewhere else at the moment. But that will have to wait till after Christmas. So I'm having to make do and mend. So that's what I'm gonna do. Anyway, go around all of the edges um, with an emery board, just to kind of tidy them up when before I stick them all down. But to start off with, I'm going to do some splatters. So I need um, a fan brush. So I've got my little fan brush and some silver paint. So I'm going to go to my indigo blue silver paint. He says rushing over to his cabinet to grab it. And I've got Indigo Blue Vodka Martini Metallic. So, silver, of course. So, I've shook it up and I've got some paint in the lid and I've got to be careful not to pick up the wrong bottle. Don't want that, want that. So I'll put that to one side. I know I could have got into a lot of trouble there. Um, and I'm just gonna grab some silver paint, put it onto my craft mat, spritz a little bit with water, Mix it up so it gets a little bit runny. And I'm probably gonna need a little bit more than that, but hey ho. And then I'm just going to splatter my black card with some silver. And that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that for all six. So I may have to replenish the silver paint, but that's okay. Give it a swirl, mix it up, get it a little bit runny, and then we can splatter our black, black, black card with silver. So next one, 
So of course I need to do this with all six. So you've seen me do these three. There's no point you sitting around watching me do the rest. So I'll do these and then I'll jump to the end. Okay, so my six backgrounds are kind of dry. So that white, well, that silver obviously now looks a little bit white on the black cardstock, but it does shimmer. It does shine, it does shimmer. It does catch the light, which is nice. You just see that kind of like sparkle in there. Subtle, doesn't want to be in your face. Trust me, doesn't want to be in your face. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now with those is obviously I need to just sand down the edges with my emery board, and then I'm going to glue one down onto the front of each of my card fronts. Now he says that, oh, there it is, there's his glue. So for that, I'm just going to use my, um, no, is that gonna block to itself? It's been behaving itself so well these last few days. No, nope, I'm probably gonna have to get a pin in that, right. Bear with me, I'll be right back. Okay, got it working. <laughs> so I'm just going to quickly, just rub around the edge where it needs it, so there doesn't need to be any more there. So I'll grab my glue pen and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue just around the outside. I'm not going to use a huge amount. And then just stick that down onto my card base, just making sure I've got an equal border all the way around. And that's going to be it for that. So I'm going to do the same thing again to all six, or the remaining five. So I will do that, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so the next step, while my card bases, the black card on the card bases is drying and flattening out, is to create some Christmas tree kind of shapes. So this is, or these are going to be my nice shiny, shiny Christmas trees. And to create those, I've just cut um, some of this background into a 12 centimeter high by four centimeter, sorry, eight centimeters wide rectangle and then I've just brought my trimmer in and I've marked the halfway mark so four centimeters and I'm just going to line up my trimmer with that corner and then just run it so it hits at this side on the mark and then just when I'm happy move it over, drop the guard down and then cut. I can then save that for another piece and then at this side I then just line that up in the corner, bring that back over this side, drop it down and then cut. So I've now got a very tall triangle in the shape of a Christmas tree that's eight centimeters across the bottom and 12 all the way up. Perfect. So I'm sure you're wondering how I created my background. Well, this is how. Okay, so to create the shimmery background, as you can see, all shiny, but all mottled and, and grunged, almost like um, a stained glass window, you might say but possibly not. Um, so to create that, it's quite simple. So you start off with a shiny base. So this is just a sheet of gold mirror board. And of course I've dusted off my alcohol inks, my Tim Holtz and Ranger alcohol inks. Now these only get used every so often. Don't worry, that's my camera that you can see in the reflection that's pointing down. It isn't some long-necked goose or giraffe peering over the top, don't worry. Um, so yeah, so I've dusted off all my alcohol inks and I'm predominantly going to start off with 
um, some of the darker colours, so some of the darker reds and greens. So um, I'm going to start off with cranberry and I'm going to just add dots random around the paper, around the page, like so. And then I'm going to add a couple of lighter shades of red, so this time I've got watermelon. Whether these colours or not are still available, I've got no idea. It's been that long since I've actually bought any alcohol inks. I really couldn't tell you. And then I'm going to just add a few drops of red chilli pepper. Which probably isn't that far off from watermelon. And before I go any further, I'm going to be very, very careful. And I'm going to just add in a few drops of clover. I am aware that red and green create brown but this is alcohol ink so they won't mix. And then I've got some small, well a little bit of pool which I'm going to add just in drops around. Now before this dries and sets I've got um, my blending tool and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around and start building up the background colour. Because it's predominantly red there's a few other colours popping in there, don't worry about it. Trying to get all the way around and cover that background gold colour as much as possible. It does take a little bit of time, but you know, nothing of any worth comes easy. Now we've got the basic red background down we can start bringing in some more of those other colours so this time again I've got some more pool I'm going to drop those just onto there and of course that's going to start separating onto the page I'll we'll start separating and moving the ink and then we can just start dabbing with the tool you see it does start to break up the surrounding colour. Now I'll never get an exact match for the one I did earlier because you can't control how the alcohol ink is going to react with the colours underneath. So it's all kind of a, um, a if you pardon the expression, a suck it and say. So this is the citrus so this is some of that lighter green colour and I'm just shaking the bottle and I'm just going to quickly swap a little foam over to one of the green ones that I used earlier and then again just start dabbing around just to kind of break up big patches so that it mod mottles and melds into the surrounding area. And what you can do is you can actually put a little bit onto your pad and just start dabbing in. And that also helps, can you see, to start breaking it up into little cells. Okay, so now I'm going to bring in a little bit of blue colour, a bit more of that pool. Just to add a few more of those.
you can see how it's starting to break it up. Using the same, um, the same piece of felt, if you like, just dab over the top and just let the cells in that form. And you can just start adding in a little bit more of that other colour into the other areas just to see how it's going to interact. You can see how it's all starting to break up and you can just add in extra bits of colour. So this is a stream, so this is another blue, darker blue. So I'm going to add too much of that. That should do. And again I'm just going to swap over the felt and we'll just start adding in breaking that up and adding those bits of colour elements and you can see how it starts to break into it So as it starts to dry you get those really nice kind of motley effects and all I'm going to do is just keep on just adding a few extra bits of colour in there. I've got a little bit of um, like hazelnut brown here so just to add a few little darker spots here and there and then just using the same to start lifting, teasing that colour in. Just creates a few other spots where you get different effects building up with those colours. And the trick is, is don't be frightened to play. And if you think it's not dark enough or you want a little bit of extra blue in there or a little bit of extra purple in there, just add in as much colour in there as you want to. So I'm going to go to um, my citrus again. I'm just going to drop one or two little bits in. There we go. That'll do. And then just pad with that and just work around. And just let the alcohol do its thing. If you drop the alcohol down it will spread and pull and create darker outlines which is really really nice and you can build up your colours however you want to. So I've got some more of that kind of dark stream colour. I want a little touch over there, maybe a little drop there and maybe one just about here. see how it starts to work. And just build your colour up. When you're happy or you think you don't want to do any more to it for fear of, of, of knocking the balance out, just stop. Just stop and leave it because obviously it will dry. But I, because this card does have a tendency to, to bow um, I did just stick it down with some temporary tape, but look at that. So that is how I created that mottled background colour. And obviously I kept on going and kept on going and adding in more colours on this one because it's a lot darker. But there's a lighter version. You can keep on going and keep on going. I'm going to mix and match with these. More of a green in that one, but more kind of reds in that one. So I'm happy with both of those 
so I'm ready to continue. So that was the original one and this was the one you've just seen me create and those two were the ones that I cut out from the one that you've just seen me create. I know, it's magic. <laughs> I just recorded them in the opposite in the opposite way. So to get the other Christmas tree shapes out of this one, I'm just going to cut a strip which is going to be 12 centimetres high, like so. I can discard that piece and then I can cut another piece there at eight, which will be that piece, and then another piece there, which will be eight. Discard that piece. And then while I've still got my pencil to hand, he says, just mark that at four centimeters, which is halfway across. Now, obviously if you're doing, um, an A2 sized version card, then you just, you know, just jiggle your measurements appropriately for the size of card that you're making. Or if you've got a Christmas tree die, why not run it out of the Christmas tree die? You don't have to do it exactly the same way that I'm doing. You know, these videos are only for um, inspiration when all said and done not necessarily to be followed slavishly. I know some people do like to copy exactly, but you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Love that one. Um, but it's nice if you just use, you know, or take what I've done as the basis and then do your own thing in your own way. Make it yours. So that one. So I've got four from that one piece, and then I'll be able to get the others out of this. So I'll just cut that one at 12 as well. Then I can put that to one side to be used at a later date. So I'll cut that at eight. that bit at eight and then just move that back to four okay so you've seen me do the others I'm going to do exactly the same thing with these two so I'll cut these out and then I'll join you again when I'm ready to start constructing there are my six shiny mottled Christmas trees and here are my little um, star spangled card bases. So I'm going to just take one of those, just turn it over, got a little touch of glue. What have I done with my glue pen? There it is. So I'm just going to add a little touch of glue because this is mirrored card stock, it is a little bit heavier. And then I'm going to stick that down to the front. Don't worry about getting any glue on that, it will dry clear. Oh, how lovely is that? even if I do say so myself. The last thing for the front of the card is just to add a little bit of a base to the Christmas tree. So to do that I've just cut some corrugated cardboard and I've just cut the angles at a little bit, cut the edges at a little bit of a taper. But if it's just a little bit too deep I can just trim that off then I can just stick that underneath there to finish off my little Christmas tree. Just make sure I get it as straight as I possibly can. So I'll just get some glue again. 
a little bit of glue on the back and line it up and then just stick it down and we can maneuver it like so and then we have a beautiful shiny kind of mottled Christmas tree on a kind of starry night sky kind of background love that so I'm going to go ahead and do the other five once I've done that I'll be right back okay so I've just started recording again because just as I was doing number four or started to do number four I thought to myself do you know what I wonder what these would look like if they were stuck up on foam pads so that's exactly what I've done for the remaining few so that's flat so that's just stuck down flat and that is on foam pad so it's just raised up a little bit I've deliberately not painted the edge of the cardstock because when you do that you actually see that white line which kind of helps with the border on the black if you see what I mean because you've got the white border all the way around having a white border on your um, Christmas tree just kind of like enhances it a little bit rather than having it just black so also with it being raised up actually I've got one that I've still got to do to show you um, but because you're actually raised up on foam pads you don't have to cut your Christmas tree base down you can actually just tuck it underneath so it, it's maybe a bit better for some people so I've still got one that I haven't taken the foam pads off well the backs of the foam pads off and I've just got circle dots so pop dots, foam dots, whatever you want to call them on the back of this you could use foam tape or whatever you prefer doesn't really make any difference whatsoever you could even use some of that silicon glue if you're if you like using that you know the stuff that sets dimensional but rock hard and then just make sure that we're placing the Christmas tree in the middle of the card and that the top isn't going to go past the black and then just gently push it down and then you can grab your Christmas tree base put your, gray, your glue on the back and because you've left a little bit of a gap that will just tuck under just like that so you can position it wherever you want it and then when you're happy let it go cool eh? <laughs> okay so there are my six alcohol ink Christmas tree Christmas cards so these are the type of cards that I normally keep or like to keep back uh, on stock just in case I get a Christmas card from somebody that I've forgotten to send one to or to use as a little thank you note if I get a gift or something like that um, now because you've got black backgrounds and you've also got that little bit of corrugated cardboard you can either team one of these cards up with a craft envelope or you can you can team it up with a black envelope the choice is yours now I often get asked where I purchase my envelopes from um, eBay I just do a search for craft envelope um, or black envelope and I just put in the size in the search criteria so for these I would put in black A6 envelopes and I just buy them in packs of like 50 and the same with the craft envelopes um, I just put in A6 craft envelope and that's what you get so I hope you've enjoyed watching me create these rather different Christmas cards or thank you notes or um, any time kind of whoops I've forgotten kind of card um, if you have please remember to give it a thumbs up share the video with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel already you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video that's all from me for now and this obviously is day seven of my seven days of Christmas for 2019 so that's it <laughs> I'm afraid no more Christmas projects ha as if I'll see you all again real soon Bye for now.
I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.